Hello there! If you don't know me, my name is Maria and I like to make technology videos on the internet. And in this week's video, we're going to be talking about how to write a really really good software engineering resume. So I have made so many notes over the past few years, and especially this year, about how to write a good resume because I've attended so many recruiting events like Microsoft or Google interns talking about how they got into Google and things like that. So I wanted to actually tell you all the things that I've learned and explain First of all, the philosophy of writing a resume and how you should think about it, then how you should format it, and also the content of writing bullet points, and then showing you how I'm going to try to overhaul my own resume and try to use these tips and tricks. So that's gonna be the breakdown of today's video. So first of all, let's start off with the philosophy I want you to have about making a resume. So the whole point of having a resume is to try to get an interview with the company, of course. Your goal should just be to make it as general as possible and list your highlights, all your strengths, not your weaknesses, so that they can contact you and then you haven't written a whole essay, you've written a few bullet points about each of your experiences and then they can build on top of that and ask you questions about it. So obviously these should be things that you can be questioned about. What else do you need to be able to get an interview? Well, there's actually three main factors to lead to the decision of you getting an interview. The first is the quality and the fit of your experiences to that company. The second is how well you explain your experiences on your resume. And the third is your network and referrals that you can get. So in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the second of those things. In future videos, I can talk about the rest. Also, what you need to keep in mind is that there are going to be different people viewing your resume, of course. So the three main people that are going to be viewing it are recruiters, hiring managers and software engineers who are going to be interviewing you. So you need to make it clear enough for them about like what you have done at your other workplaces or what you have done on your projects. So those are like some things that you need to keep in mind. So basically a resume is a concise list of all of your highlights and the things that you've done that can present you as the best version of yourself. So you don't want to exaggerate, especially if you're still a noob, <laughs> like if you haven't had any job experience or if you only had a few internships, you don't want to say like, oh, I'm the best at this or I'm super proficient in this. Like, oh, I'm the best at Python. No, you haven't. Like you're not the one who wrote the programming language. You haven't written a compiler in Python. Like, no, you ha you're okay at it. Just be willing to learn and be eager and show that to people through your resume or through your interactions with them. Okay, now let's talk about formatting your resume. So a really good tip is that I don't want you to go outside of the box. Like do not go outside of the box because the main thing is that you want the recruiter to be able to easily scan your resume and also for the ATS to easily scan it and just find all the main points about yourself. You want it to be easy to read because recruiters, like literally the Microsoft recruiters said that they only view a resume for an average of six seconds. So that's not a lot of time. So you either A, you want it to be a layout or a template that they have seen before, so it's easy for them to scan through, or B, you want it to be your own layout, but you want it to be clean and like easy to read and for them to find the main ideas. Also, some important points that you need to keep in mind are that your resume should only be maximum one page. You should always send it in PDF format. And for some reason, like, I guess this makes sense, but you should only have like two colors maximum, like from in mine it's like black and like minty green. So just keep that in mind. Like you don't wanna make it all crazy and super colorful. So now let's go into the sections that you should have on your resume, specifically for software engineering people, you know? So the sections required would be, first of all, your contact information and like pertinent details that you want to share with people. So your name, your phone number, your LinkedIn, your email, and your GitHub, of course. Honestly, recruiters apparently don't even care about personal websites. So unless you're like, trying to be a freelance person or unless you really want a personal website, then go ahead and make one. But like your projects will be on your GitHub anyways, like your information is on your LinkedIn and well, it doesn't matter. And actually what I found out is that they rarely click your links, which is sad because I actually put all the links to things on my resume. But like I said before, they don't look at your resume for a long time. They just scan it for a few seconds. They're not gonna click all the links and like investigate you. And if they wanted to investigate you, they could just go on your GitHub and find your code. Secondly, education. So you want to list your university, any major or minor that you're taking, and expected graduation date, which is also important like I mentioned in my previous video because you want to tell them when you're going to be projected to graduate. And it's also interesting because a lot of the time they, companies will want to hire people who are in their junior year. So they're like going to graduate soon and then they'll pay them slightly higher salaries because they're like, okay, we want to get them to 
take our return offer when they graduate. So that's why I've seen a bunch of companies do. And they also said to list your GPA if it's 3.5 or higher. So that means that if your GPA is lower, then you can just list your major GPA. So say you're in computer science like I am, then you can say, because sometimes you might have not tried harder in your electives, you might have gotten poorer marks. So that's why you want to list your other GPA if possible. And you can also list some relevant coursework if that's important for the type of job you're applying for, like maybe a specific job for like data engineering, you might have taken like some courses in that or for data science, you could list like statistics and things like that. That might also be important. Number three is experiences. So this is the most important part. So you're going to list your company, your title and role and the duration that you were at that company for. And you also want to list your actual duties and the technologies that you use. So you can list your programming languages and frameworks that you used at that company and also KPIs, so key performance indicators. I'm pretty sure that's what they stand for. So you want to try to list actual numbers and I'm going to go into this in the next section. So don't worry that I'm like going through this very quickly, but you should also make sure that you can talk at length about all these experiences that you're listing, like whether it's an internship or a leadership experience, you should be able to talk about it at least like for a few minutes to someone who asks you because a lot of times recruiters will have like phone interviews with you and they'll ask you, oh, what was the time that you did this? Oh, how was this experience? What did you learn at this company? So you have to be able to answer those questions. Four is projects that you list. You want to mostly do personal projects, but also like you saw in my previous resumes, I listed a bunch of hackathon projects that I did. Recruiters didn't really notice and actually a recruiter really liked one of my hackathon projects, like project ideas, so that was funny. The only reason to include actual coursework that you have done is if you like went above and beyond so maybe it was a course project that you worked on alone and then you went above and beyond or if you worked with a few other people I guess and like you finished the project and you added more to it and it's also only if you really have no other experience that you would add this type of work or like project onto your resume. Number five is skills so that's where you want to list programming languages or frameworks that you know and you should list them in the order of most experience in them to least experience. And any other additional stuff you want to add, it could be like te you, you were a teaching assistant, you were in some student clubs, you went to hackathons, you won awards or scholarships. And also a really good one is if you contributed to open source code, that is something that like recruiters love to see apparently. And they're like, oh, if I saw someone contribute to open source code, I'm gonna immediately give them an interview. I've heard that from some recruiter, which was really funny. I guess that's really good. Or if you have patents or publications, that's also pretty cool. And of course hobbies, because that's gonna be like the main point of interest when you're actually like talking to someone, which I told you in my other video that no one ever talked to me about those things, but maybe one day they will. Okay, I decided to change up the angles a little bit. And we're going to the main important part of your resume, which is how you actually write it. What content do you include in your bullet points and how do you actually write a bullet point? How do you structure it? Because I know most of us are like, how the F do we even say anything? Like, I don't know what to say. I only know how to use action verbs and all of our action verbs are all the same. So let's try to do this together. We'll figure it out together, don't worry. So some general tips on writing good bullet points is that they should be around or less than 140 characters and they should start with an action word, like I mentioned, and you should be honest. Do not lie in your bullet points because people will challenge you if you do that. <laughs> how do you actually write a bullet point? What format do you use? Like, is there an actual framework for doing it? Yes, there are. So don't worry, I will teach you those two frameworks. So basically for each experience that you have or maybe each project that you have, you should be able to list two to three bullet points that explain that and describe what you did. You want to be using strong action words, not weak ones. You don't want to say, oh, I helped this. I participated in that. No, you want to say that you did something really good and show what impact you did for that company or in this project. You should be using strong action words and also job related jargon, as they say. So those are like the key words that the ATS, like those scanners are going to find. Like, oh, I did server side rendering. I did that or that. You'll, they'll be able to find it with machine learning. Those are the key words that they're looking for, possibly. And there's also this chart the Stanford chart for changing your weak verbs into stronger verbs. So I'm gonna to try to use that on my own resume. So there are two frameworks for writing good bullet points. The first one is called impact what? So here's an example of what a bad bullet point would look like and a good bullet point. And basically you want to start with the impact and the outcome that you achieved and then what you did. So it's kind of the opposite of what most people say. Like in my resume that you've seen, it's like, oh, 
I did this, and then this is the impact. No, I won't, you need to flip that around. So then they can be like, whoa, they made the company this much money. They increased sales by this much or things like that. And ideally, you do want to have actual numbers. You can estimate them, of course, but maybe you might be able to like actually ask someone like a data scientist or somebody to tell you what were the metrics of the thing that you did. Or you can probably see you might have a dashboard or something that tells you the metrics. And the second framework is called why first. So you essentially want to explain what did you do? How did you do it? And why did you do it? So here's an example of how that would work. And that's like these two frameworks are the ones that I'm going to be trying to use on my resume. So why don't we go and try doing that together? So this is my initial resume and I'm thinking of taking out these icons, like I said, and just including the links to them normally. Taking out some of my skills because I don't think that all of them are necessary here and it's kind of a lot. And obviously fixing my bullet points is the main thing. As you can see, I did try to include numbers already, but I could definitely flip these around and do the impact what framework. So I'm going to be trying to do this. So I'm just going to make a copy so I can have this as an older version. I'm looking at eight UX intern resumes that are done right. So that I like this Karen Slong lady, so I wanted to do something like that. I don't know if you can actually do that properly in, um, in the Google Docs, so I was trying to do it. So what I have been trying to do is to fix my font sizes and like trying to get these things aligned, like the scales and all my contact information. So that I have made things smaller font and squished things together. I also added bullet points. I'm sad in Google Docs, you can't like actually move the bullet point until the left side which is kind of weird. I don't know, what do you think about these bullet points? I'm not sure about them. What I'm going to try to do is actually first test my bullet points on this website called resibullet.io. So it's 100% free and I click to analyze. Okay, 46%. Okay, so I'm going to sign up and see how to make this better designed and implemented. So those are my action words. Say target is 15%. So I have 13% right now, that's pretty good. Uh, measurable results. So yeah, I didn't include anything. Well, really right now I can't really include anything because I kind of haven't like actually shipped this out to production yet, like the app that I'm making. So I can't really do any measurable, measurable results. Common words 67%. What do I express JS or Node.js wasn't included? Maybe I need to do Node.js. Okay, resume bullet length. She can slice simple. So 15 words. Good. Character is good. Skim test. See the first four words and the last four words. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess I'll try to fix this then. I've been using these action verbs, like the Stanford ones I was mentioning. So these have been really helpful. And also trying to put stuff in Resi Bullet, but yeah, it was not very helpful. Like not super helpful because it didn't actually give you examples of what's a good. So I said that I designed and developed my mobile progressive web app using these technologies. So that's good because you can see all the technologies. So this is what I did. I said reduced embedded app load time by 500% for 140 apps by implementing JWT auth. So this was the type of impact what uh, framework. Okay, so when I was a web developer intern, I said that I increased new merchant conversion by over 5% by championing a project to add two reusable and scalable components to the open source Polaris design system. So this is also the impact and then the what type of framework so like you can mix it up between those two frameworks i find because sometimes it might be easier to say it one way versus the other because in this other case i did the other version where i explained like, okay streamline the use of contextual learning components so this is what did i do and how did i do it through creating a flexible toolbox for over 1000 developers and then why did i do it to save thousands of hours of time it did clean up a lot of code and it definitely saved thousands of hours of time for those developers that wanted to use it. I changed the ordering of this so I could say like the things that I know most and the things I like have just been learning recently, like more new to me. And then yeah, my education activities are the same. Yeah, I just kept those the same. So yeah, this is my resume so far. Okay, so yeah, I'm tired of trying to fix my resume. I think I've improved it a lot by instituting those new bullet point frameworks. And I definitely hope that you learned a lot from watching me try to implement these new tips and tricks and also from hearing them. I encourage you to try to fix your resumes 
and also to start applying for jobs with that resume and see what happens because that's what I'm going to try doing to see if this actually helped me get more job offers because yes I have experience but it's also it is about what you put on your resume and like I said it's how you present yourself to other people and you the way that they see you is through your resume so try to present yourself well I hope you learned a lot and if you do then remember to smash the thumbs up button comment below if you think my resume is still bad and what I need to fix and also what your favorite tip was and also you can send me your resumes if you're interested maybe I'll do a resume roast video who knows that would be really fun so I'll see you next time. Bye.